Hi, I'm Andrew Holt, and welcome to my podcast series. Today I'll be interviewing a very young 14-year-old singer-guitarist-songwriter from Perth in Western Australia. Lily Joy Kelly, Girl in a Glitch, has already released some of her own original compositions. Lily's tunes are available on all music platforms. Hi Lily, and welcome to my podcast. A few moments later... Hi Andrew, thank you for having me on your podcast today. This is very new and exciting for me and it's a big break away from all the schoolwork I've been doing. I wish that our assignments could be podcasts, that would be so much more fun and easier. I first commented on your music over a year ago and you've come so far since then. Is it really true that you used to play Adora the Explorer guitar as a kid, eventually convincing your parents to buy you a ukulele? Yes, I did have a Dora the Explorer plastic guitar. I'm pretty sure it was from Toys R Us. And it had three buttons on it. And it played the same three tunes over and over again. And my mum hated it, but she knew I loved it. So she was just like, I don't even care at this point. Anyways, then it mysteriously disappeared. And I was like, where did it go? But I'm pretty sure she gave it to my cousin. So, yeah, but I was pretty old for it anyways. And then I saw Grace Vanderhall on America's Got Talent and I was like, I want to play the ukulele and I want to sing. So I begged my parents for a ukulele and they finally gave in and they got me one for Christmas one year. And it was wrapped in like this red curling ribbon And I really wanted a strap for the ukulele, but I knew I wasn't going to be getting one of them. That was too much to ask. So I used the red curling ribbon and I tied it around my ukulele and made a strap with it. And all my clothes got stained with this red line just across all of my clothes. It was just, it wasn't a very good look. But anyways, I decided that I would learn my first song on it. You might put it into use, you know. So I learned Riptide by Vance Joy. That was the first song that I ever learned. And I was learning it in the kitchen. So my mom would be doing the dishes and I wouldn't even be able to hear myself, but I, it didn't matter because that was the only time I could practice. So I learned the song and then I was like, you know what, I want to write songs. So I wrote my first song and my mom was kind of like, oh, this is, this is like getting pretty serious, you know? My music teacher at the time, she was like, yeah, like you've, you've got something here, like you've got to do something with this. You entered a talent contest last year playing your guitar and singing and you won it. You won a trip to Rottnest Island as a prize. How did that make you feel? Validated? Shy? Amazed? And there was this thing that we were going to do where all of the schools from WA, we all got together and we did like this, it was called Wagsums, I'm pretty sure. And we went to Crown Theatre and we did like whole little performance. It was over a few nights and a few schools did it. And there was also soloists. And my music teacher was like, you've got to audition to be one of the soloists with your new song. And um, my new song was Up, Up and Away. And I was like, okay, okay, maybe, maybe I should do this. So I went into the audition and I actually started playing and the lady that was auditioning me was like, it's too loud, turn it down. And I was like, oh no, I'm off to like a really bad start. Like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. So I did my audition, didn't think much of it. And then a few weeks later, we get uh, an email that are like, Lily, you're in. And I'm like, whoa, like I just did that. And I was like, really shocked with myself, but also really proud of myself. And I remember driving on the night of the performance, I remember driving there and I was so nervous because this was like my first big performance in front of like thousands of people. And it was probably even like one of my first performances ever. So it was a pretty big thing to start off with. And anyways, I got up there, I did it. And I was really, like, I thought I was gonna choke up on stage, but. I did it and I I was really proud of myself afterwards and I just remember how happy I was that I did that and yeah I was just I was just enjoy and then after that started doing more performances at school 
um, I, I got more opportunities to do more performances and that's kind of what happened and that's how I got to where I am now. Yeah, so it was called Hillary's Got Talent and the cool thing about it was there wasn't a first or second or third place winner. We were all considered winners and even the runner-ups, they got like a box of chocolates and some gift cards. It was really sweet of them. But yeah, we got given a little ticket to Rottnest and it was really cool. I went with my stepdad. We went to a lighthouse, pretty sure it was Naturalist Lighthouse, which was which was really cool because in primary school, I was in a faction called Naturalist. Um, and anyways, so it's over here, it's called like an overseas trip because it's a little island, so you have to go over the ocean to get there. And we were pretty lucky because last time we went, we made the bad decision of going in winter. And oh my gosh, I cannot even explain how choppy it was. It was very like, oh, it was just very choppy. And there was a lot of, everyone was seasick. But this time we, we learned our lesson and this time we went in the summer. <laughs> and we went there and it was way less choppier on the boat. And we also went to go see the quokkas, which are little cute animals that are at Rottnest. And Andrew, if you ever come to WA, you have to get across to Rottnest and take a selfie with a quokka because it's just, it's kind of like a tradition. Everyone does it when they go to Rottnest. Um, so now that the borders are open, you can try and get over here and get to Rottnest. But yeah, th so that was basically my little, um, my little thing that I won. It, Hillary's Got Talent and I really enjoyed it because it was just a nice holiday for, for when I was in the summer holidays, so yeah. I know you've done some live busking in and around the streets of Perth and you've scored a live performance with your acoustic at the Perth Royal Show. How did it feel performing in front of such a huge crowd? Okay, so I did a lot of busking at the markets. Um, my, big, my place that I went the most was definitely Wanneroo Markets and also IGA Rossmoyne. They, they're both of those places so loving and I love busking there. But yeah, then I got an opportunity to go to the Wanneroo show and the Royal show and performed at both. <sighs> okay, well, the Royal show, um, there's a little bit of a story. So I was, my little segment of the show, I was put right between two, there's a, there's a show called Bluey the Dog or something like that. And I was put between two Bluey shows. And anyways, so they just got finished doing their little show and I went up and this kid in a pram starts crying its head off because it wants Bluey. Anyways, in the song On The Run, um, my most recent song, I was singing it and I sing, in, now I've seen the blue. And this kid stops for a second when I say, now I've seen the blue. And then I keep singing and he starts crying again. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is going on right now? Like, it was such a cool experience, but this one kid was just sitting there crying. And I was just like, oh no. But anyways, I went and I did the Wanneroo show. I went with Bailey Perry and Connor Perry. And we did a little show. Um, I did, uh, I think, one original. And then I did some group, some group stuff with them, which was really cool because Going up on stage with other people is like a lot more fun than just being on your own because you get to interact and bounce your energy off of each other. And so we did that. And that was, luckily there wasn't any crying kids at that one. <laughs> but um, I've actually taken a break from busking for a bit because of COVID and school. It's been a bit hard lately, but I'm definitely hoping, well, as soon as this COVID settled down, Definitely hoping on going back and doing some more busking. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I see you won a guitar from Manny's Instruments and Pro Audio. They gifted you a Kramer Radiant Red Electric Guitar. That's crazy. I love Manny's. I go there for all of my gear. I got my Rode mic from there. I also got my Fender guitar there. I think it was a Tim, Tim Armstrong, I think it was. And... I love it. It's a black Tim Armstrong guitar. 
and it's so it's so cool it like the the frets have like these really nice pearl designs in it but I went in there one day just going in for some guitar leads and some picks and I didn't really think much I was just getting my gear and they were they had this like contest for a Kramer and I was like oh that's cool I'll just I'll just see if I'll just go in and enter the competition anyways um didn't think much of it like a month went by and I just I forgot about it and then I got this call from this random person I was like oh it's just a scammer I pick it up and luckily I picked it up because usually I don't pick up the scammer calls but picked up the phone and they were like you have just won a guitar and I'm like I'm trying to think I'm like when did I when did I apply for a guitar and I was like, well, okay, well, this is pretty dope, guys. Like, I've got a guitar. And anyways, they were like, well, don't you remember? This is Manny's. You have won a Red Kramer electric guitar. And I was like, oh, my Lord. Like, whoa. Like, I just won a guitar. Like, it was like winning the lottery. And it's, it's like, it's not a cheap guitar. Like, it's a pretty expensive guitar. So I was over the moon about this. And anyways, it starred in my new music video for On The Run. And you'll see Alicia, my bestie, she's, she's just playing along on the, on the red Kramer. And so, yeah, it made its little star appearance. Would you like a sponsorship from them in the future? I love Manny's and I would love to get a sponsorship like from them one day. That would just be incredible. So... Yeah, I just, I love Manny's. <laughs> you also enjoy a healthy outdoors lifestyle, surfing, etc. What other interests do you enjoy? My young listeners would be very interested. Well, this is a pretty funny story about the surfing. As, as a lot of people will know, um, social media can be a tiny bit fake sometimes. You know, sometimes you, you do a little bit of editing. And that post of me surfing was not what it looked like. Um at all pretty much. I nose dived quite a lot that day. Um, I also got dumped by a lot of waves and I was a washing machine in the ocean just tumbling around like a piece of seaweed. Um, <laughs> that one photo of me like on the surfboard and I look like I'm surfing. I look really cool. I look like I look like, I look like something, but anyways, I look really cool. I look like a surfer, like a professional. I'm not. That was the first time I ever surfed in my life. And, you know, I was, I wasn't on a big wave at all. <laughs> the funny thing is that photo, um, the instructor guy was helping me because I had a bit of a tantrum because I got dumped by a wave and I did not want to do it. Anyways, my mum forced me to go back in and I'm pretty glad because I got the post done. But the instructor dude, shout out to Harley from Go Surf. But the instructor guy, he he was helping me and he was like holding onto the board and I was like lying on the board. Anyways, this little tiny wave, like I was in like really close to the shore, but this tiny wave comes and I was like, I was doing well and then he was like stand up so like I stand up and my mum actually got a video of it and I snapshotted the moment that I stood up. I edited Harley out, sorry Harley, but I edited him out and I kind of cropped it to look like I was on a wave. I wasn't surfing <laughs> whatsoever, well I was surfing but I wasn't professional. Anyways, other hobbies that I like, um, I like to think I can dance. I actually did a bit of Irish dancing because that's like my culture and I love Irish dancing. All of the blingy dresses and honestly the, the massive wigs, pretty cool. Um, but it was very expensive and I would have preferred spending my money on music equipment rather than Irish dancing stuff. So I quit that little thing. But I also like to do just, you know, classical dance like the lyrical dance I actually do dance as a subject at school a lot of my friends are professional dancers and they're like twirling around the place and I'm kind of twirling around not really knowing what I'm doing and but what can I say when I was a kid I wanted to be a ballerina 
and it's a lot like the ukulele thing I begged my mum but this was a thing she would not let me she was just like nah you don't need it you're gonna just quit and I, I also knew in my head that I was just gonna quit anyways but I wanted to be a ballerina for the point shoes so of course she wouldn't let me do it so I decided I'd make my own little ballet shoes I made it with paper sticky tape and like a red uh, a pink sharpie highlighter it was really interesting because every time you would try to like dance in them they would just rip and <laughs> they were not shoes at all but I loved them and my mum was like well are you gonna chuck them and I kept I kept hold of them for like a year or so and every time they break I just stick a new piece of sticky tape on it and I was like no they're okay and they just looked like a mess by the end but yeah I've always liked to think I could dance but kind of not really I'm not the best at it I don't know a lot of tricks or anything um but my my best hobby I think is eating I really like to eat um after school I'll come home you know three o'clock and I'll just raid the fridge and you know it'll just be gone just even the whole fridge will just be gone and I'll be like yeah just did my just did my little fun little thing there we go I just did my little hobby no but in all honesty music is definitely you know the best thing that I've ever found and I've stuck with it you know my whole life so it's definitely my best eating and music is like on a scale it's like could you really pick, you know? But yeah, those are kind of my hobbies, if you could say so. <laughs> I'm so glad you took up my advice and hooked up a link tree so your fans can listen to your music. Do you have plans to expand your social media? Or are you happy to be low-key at this stage of your life? You're so young. I mean, is that even a thing at 14, being low-key? Yeah, so I I did the link tree thing. It's in my bio for most of my social medias. And you'll find, well, I actually saw, Andrew, that you had the little icons on your links to all of your, you know, little podcasts and stuff. And I was like, that's really cool. So I decided, if you look at my link tree, that I put the little icons, like I put a little running man for on the run, which is really cool. And I love things like that. But you'll find my YouTube linked in the link tree. And I actually really am enjoying YouTube at the moment. I'm even thinking of making like my own vlogging channel because I'm just, I really love editing videos and editing photos. I've made all of the cover arts for all of my songs so far. And well, yeah, I just really love editing things. I also, um, my videos, they have been filmed, like I love visual things. I think most people are visual people. And all my videos, that's why I, like, that's why I do music videos. And the I've had people help me with my videos. So Marcus Deacon and his name on Instagram is Meekin. So you'll find him. Everything erased from the sketches that you
serious note, you sent me through your whole life story, and I know that you do suffer from type 1 diabetes. I remember my favourite niece Lisa also has diabetes 1, and when she was your age, she was sitting at the dinner table eating ice cream and slowly going into a sugar crash. But she looked at me in the eyes defiantly and said, Go away. This is between me and my ice cream. Okay, well, my dog, Geronimo, he, um, he was supposed to be a diabetic alert dog for my diabetes. Um, but let's just say he failed his... He retired early. He, he failed his training. Um, he, it was more because we kind of just stopped training him because... It was stressful, you know, you had to, every time I had a hypo, I'd have to spit into swabs and it was just a really long process and it just got very tiring for all of us. So, and the fact that I was like newly died, like I think I was a year into being diagnosed and it was just very stressful for all of us. So he, he just retired early and now he's just a family dog. We all love him and he, he just sits on the couch and he does his thing and he, he barks at us when he wants to go out for a walk, when he wants, when he wants his breakfast. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a little information about my dog. What advice can you give to any teenagers listening in my audience that are struggling with and controlling their condition? Well, I'd probably first of all be like, I'm probably not the best person to be asking because I have dealt with a lot of issues with it myself. But if I was to actually give advice, it would be just advice for anyone really to stay healthy is just you know drink all your water get your fluids up have tons of rest well as much as you can um you know eat well have nice you know whole meals and really just try to take it day by day because you know that's when all of these different you know mental illnesses come in is when you start worrying about all these different things and you just honestly you've just got to be like yep just gonna take it what's going on right now in this exact moment and that's that's basically all the advice i can give on not just for people with diabetes but just for anyone that's going through anything because we all are and we all have a glitch in us so do you like cats too? Because I love cats. Well, Andrew, I actually have two cats and one of them is just completely evil. No, no, he's just got a heart of gold. No, he's, he's just got very fiery energy. He's got like a personality disorder or something. But his, his name is Panther and both of my cats are rescue cats actually. But Panther is the youngest and yeah, he's very gets up to a lot of mischief around the house, you know? Anyways, um, we're always finding surprises in the litter tray, which is always fun. But my, I also have another cat called Bluey, which yes, I was the, he was the original. Um, this was before there was even a show called Bluey. But anyways, all royalties to Blue Boy, I guess. Anyways, yeah, his real name's Blue Boy, but we all call him Bluey. And he's, we don't know exactly how old he is, but we think he's roughly about, 17 maybe 18 so i'm kind of just you know being like really extra careful with blue boy because oh my gosh he's just the cutest cat you'll ever meet like he never bites if he ever did bite it would just be like a tiny little like a little love bite you know he just he just sits there and just and he's got little snowy paws so he's gray but then he has like he has a little bit of like like he has a little snowy spot under his chin and then he's got snowy paws. Like it looks like he just stepped into the snow, which is so cute. But yeah, I've got two cats, completely different personalities, but you know, they're brothers, so they love each other, but they fight all the time. Um, yeah, so I really love cats, love all animals. Um, my fa one of my favorite places to go is the zoo. Um, I also really like penguins, in case you wanted to know. That's a little fun fact about me. My favorite animal is penguins. But yeah, I, I just love watching cute little cat videos and cute dog videos. But yeah, so I love animals. <laughs> I saw your friends commenting that you need a logo. Is that design right here, the Celtic one, 
one that you'll use in the future, or will you maybe go with the Girl in the Glitch logo that you have up on Instagram also? Well, Andrew, I really love both of my logos. If you look at the Girl in the Glitch one, in pink, it says Lily. Um, I didn't even realise that till like after we made it. So I was just looking at it one day and I was like, wait a minute, like my name is in this and it's like in order. It was really cool that we saw that. And I've told a few people and they're like, no, I don't believe you that like, you must have planned that. But we, we, we honestly didn't plan it. My mom and I just looked at it and we were like, Whoa, like what is going on here? But anyways, so I love the little logo, the little, it kind of looks Gaelic almost. I love it because it's short, simple, sweet, and it's kind of like the Nike tick. Like you look at the Nike logo and you just think, yeah, you look at the tick and you're like, that's, that's Nike. Um, or you look at the Adidas logo and you're like, that's, that's Adidas. Um, so I really am hoping that one day people will just look at that and be like, that scale on a glitch. <laughs> and also another thing about that one is if you look at it, if you overanalyze it, you, you'll notice that it kind of looks like it has a G in it. It also looks like it has the beat symbol in it or like a teardrop. Like if you analyze it, like really, like you take the time to look at it you'll see like all a whole bunch of things just pop out at you. It's like one of those 3D photos, those old 3D photos. So I, I really just love both. But as I said, I love editing. So maybe one day in the future, I might make another logo for myself. But at the moment, I'm really happy with what I've got. You seem to have a lot of pictures of yourself with ice creams and sweets for some reason. Is this an act of defiance about your condition? Well, Andrew, as ironic as it is, I actually was an ambassador for a sweet shop. But with COVID, that's kind of been a bit distant lately. Um, hopefully, I'll get back up and running, but you never know. Anyways, back on to the social media side of things. Things can be a little bit, you know, fake. And a lot of the time, the ice creams and lollies and just stuff you'll see me eating, it, I probably have taken one bite of and then I've probably given it to my stepdad who has been eyeing it up for about you know the hour that I've been taking the photos with it. it's probably half melted by then but it's it's okay um I have a, I think I like savory foods a lot more than sweet stuff I think sweet stuff can be a bit sickly in large amounts but in saying that if my sugar levels are going low I will be eating that whole ice cream, maybe even two ice creams. And fun fact, another fun fact, my favorite ice cream shop is Baskin Robbins. We don't have as many as we used to. I remember there being so many more Baskin Robbins near us as a kid, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them got closed down, which is really sad because I love them. And um, my favorite ice cream flavor was, I can't remember exactly what it was called, but it was this chocolate ice cream with little chunks of peanut butter in it. And then I'd get it in a cone that had chocolate with little peanuts on it. It was, I loved it. It was, it's, it's the best ice cream in my opinion. Or if not, if you go to go to a, you know, a random ice cream shop and they're like, we don't sell that, then choc chip, mint choc chip ice cream. That's, that's definitely, another favorite because it's refreshing with the mint um but yeah so you know i don't eat all of the lollies and sweets you see me eating you must have a big support machine behind you being so young as you are it's very unusual to have such a positive network i believe your parents are at the forefront of that media machine who else is in the background producing your amazing music videos and media yeah so a lot of my production like i have I have a producer called Kyle. He helps me with all of my like soundtracks and stuff. I just, I show him the song, show him the song I just wrote. And he's like, yep, we know what to, and I'll tell him like a song that, you know, I want it to sound like, and he'll be like, yep, I know what to do with this. Um, I also have Shirley. She is a very sweet lady. She helps me and so does Chelsea J. Gibson. You'll find her on Spotify and you'll also find Kyle on Spotify. And I also, I have so many other friends, like 
Bailey Perry and Connor Perry, um, they both of them inspire me to write songs and keep singing. Love both of them. I have so many other friends, Angelina Curtis, like this, I could just keep naming people on the list, but I actually have a new remix on the way for On The Run. Really cool. This is a special shout out to Felon. He has remixed On The Run and it sounds epic. Like you will not want to miss it. I recommend listening to it with headphones. It sounds incredible. And also that is coming out on the 17th of March. So, you know, keep a listen out for that. And yeah, I just, I have so many people supporting me. Um, a lot of the things that kind of pays for everything, because it's not cheap, like it's, it does cost money, you know. A lot of things is busking money and also <laughs> pretty guilty, but my parents' bank account, they help a lot and I'm so thankful for them because, you know, they could be using that for other things, but they decided to use it for my music and I'm so thankful for that because you know it's it's getting me to where I want to be and yeah I'm just so grateful for them so those are all my little people that help me with things and I hope to be like them and I hope that when that I can someday be someone that helps other people too so Lily, thanks so much for joining me today and my listeners are going to be over the moon to see you in a candid interview it's been a pleasure having you on my podcast, Lily. Look, Andrew, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be on your podcast. It's been such an amazing experience. I really love this. Starting something new for me, um, I love doing new things. Um, I've really enjoyed my time here. and Thank you so much again. See you, guys. See you, Lily. You've been listening to the Andrew Holt Podcast Series. Don't forget to click the link and follow and like for any more upcoming interviews. That's all for now. Bye. Ooh.